Welcome back, everybody, to the Oakland A's franchise. We're at the All-Star break in Season 6. We'll spend just a little bit of time here at the break here this season as we only have three All-Stars on this year's team. That's despite holding the second-best record in baseball, but the offense has been underperforming for much of the year, and we only have pitchers in the All-Star game this season. And inheriting the four-run lead here in the first is the ace of the American League for the second straight year, it's Joe Michael. Coming off an all-star season a year ago where he was also the Cy Young Award winner, and he's on pace to do it all over again as he's been even better this season. Five complete game shutouts in the season's first half, up to 97 overall, and he's only 22 years old. Strike three on Bryce Terang. Bouncer over to Rafael Devers and the second out on one pitch. And I talked about the possibilities of us acquiring Ian Happ just a couple episodes ago. That would give us technically like a fourth all-star this year, right? What if Ian Happ can become one of the only players to hit a home run this year off Joe Michael? Got the edge. Ooh, the sweeper must be nice if he's chasing that. And right to Pena. That's going to wrap up a 1-2-3 first. Now, I did think that Tyler Soderstrom was going to make it as the third catcher this year, and he did not because of the 19-year-old Ricky Lynn of the Detroit Tigers, who is making the case now to be the best up-and-coming catcher in the majors. He's in his second season. He had 16 first-half homers. I don't know if he's really had better stats across the board than uh, Soderstrom, but he must have beat him out by a little bit. I don't know why I'm going to try to hit with him, but here we are. I have nobody else to hit with in this game. In the air, right field. And that's going to end the fifth. We jump all the way ahead to the bottom of the eighth inning, and here's one of the team's MVPs over the last two years. It's reliever Aaron Ashby. We only had three All-Stars this year. The number one vote getter at starting pitcher, reliever, and closer. And Aaron Ashby has been such a huge part of this roster. He's usually been that first guy out of the bullpen, also our best multi-inning option. And he's put up elite numbers. And I know this is really, you know, more based on the offense and everything, but he's got nine pitcher wins in the first half. He's going to top a lot of starters in the win column. Popped up here, Altuve ranging back. One gone. Oh, and also adding on to his resume, he has uh, over a 10 strikeout per nine inning stat. So he's one of our best strikeout pitchers. He's just one of the best players we have, period. I'm going to have to consider, you know, signing him to an elite level reliever contract, seeing what kind of an impact he can bring. He's that good. 1-2 on k -Bear Ruiz and on the ground to Chavis. Two gone. Really thankful they pinch hit Logan Ohapi for Vinny Gomez. Makes this at bat uh, a little bit easier. Ground ball, Kareem Ross, the Blue Jays' second baseman, will finish off the eighth. And despite losing our closer last year, Joan Duran, we still have the top closer here in the American League. It's Penn Murphy. 26 of 29, a 147 ERA. Lefties have no clue what to do against him this year. And we get underway here in the ninth with a strike. It is pretty cool now that we're deeper into the franchise. A lot of these all-stars were drafted in the series. Here's David Matsumoto out in front. 
Did he go on that? No. Count goes three and two. Battling nine pitches into this A-B. Murphy again, three, two, missing inside. Key Brian Hayes must have figured everything out this year. He's a third base all-star for the National League. I like those, uh, like, turquoise gloves and cleats. Murphy pitching from behind and out in front. Two and two. Going to stick with the slider, and this one is going to find its way to Rodriguez and right. So it's the former A in this series, Cody Bellinger. Strike one. A full rebuild of his career, and back with the Dodgers where everything began. Got the edge, 0-2. Man, 19 pitches in, we don't have an out. Two and two, and just cannot put anybody away. This could be Murphy's worst outing we've seen so far this year. And this one's going deep to right. Rodriguez giving chase. It stays in the yard. One gone, finally. So even though I wasn't, like, playing this, like regularly i've still used almost every player on the team we have one pitcher left i didn't even mean to leave a pitcher you know after murphy but we just you know we could only use so many pitchers there's a three batter minimum and everything so we might have to use that last guy if murphy loads the bases we might have to pull him and the bases are indeed loaded. Off the bench, Willie Adamas. One big swing away from ending things. I'm going to give Murphy one more at bat here. Adamas takes a strike. We're going to let Murphy reach 30 pitches. Have a chance to get that game-ending double play. And that's strike two. This isn't even a save opportunity also, but a chance to still give up the lead. Got him with the fastball. It's two gone. So Murphy's going to stay in now to face Michael Harris. Yeah, he's getting tired. Everybody's stamina replenishes after the break, though, in this game, I'm pretty sure. Murphy... 32 pitches in. Ooh, he leaves it up and Harris is out in front. One strike away and he takes low. Right back to him. That's your ball game. American League victorious. And none of our pitchers allowed a run. Nice win for the AL. Let's get on to the second half. Actually, a fair amount of scoring for an all-star game here. 12 combined runs would be a pretty entertaining show. So the American League wins. The A's at 52 and 37 now get a couple of off days. And we can start to uh, sign some of these draft picks. And we'll know after July if any of these players have a high ceiling. So we got our first round pick, Derek Nicholson, under contract. There's our second round pick. We're four for four. We were able to sign all but one player in the very first stage, and we have to increase the interest here on Odell Spoon before we can offer, but that should be no issue. We have plenty of bonus money, and I definitely wanted to get him under contract. So as we begin the second half of the season, we have a 10-game winning streak, and we're in first place here in the West. The Astros are now in third place. The Angels at 500 are behind them. And the Mariners, 12 games back, not looking good after this 3-7 stretch. It's been an incredible season for our pitching staff. Here I thought the Cubs had the best rotation at the start of the year, or the best pitching staff top to bottom, and it turns out to be us at the halfway point. They're still here with overall really good numbers, but... I'm not even sure they pitch Shohei anymore. 
Actually, he's on the injured list, so he must still be doing... Yes, he is still pitching, still hitting, but regressing at age 34. The second half gets underway. And again, the A's extend their winning streak. It's Henry Vasquez picking up the win in the 6-2 victory. We had a homer from Luis Arise, while Vasquez went six and a third, striking out six more. Good outing for Aaron Ashby. And uh, one run given up by Penn Murphy, who really didn't need to pitch this game with us up six to one. I also wanted to make a change here because we got to talk a little bit about Kendrick Haynes. I've been praising him for much of the year, but he does have a bit of a home run issue this season. And I think for that reason, we can't keep him in the setup role. Late game home runs are just going to be way too costly. Jonathan Hernandez has turned around his numbers this season, and he is the opposite when it comes to the home runs. He has multiple years now of showing he can prevent those, and we'll give him a chance to be that setup guy. Also a really good home run preventer is Andre Palante, who finished this first half really strong. So I'm comfortable giving him some more of those key innings at the same time. Win streak on the line, and we have two on with nobody down here in the ninth. Aaron Don trying to deliver that first big hit of the second half for us. Let's see if we can rally and take our 11th or no, 12th straight game. Matt Brash in some trouble. Don in the air, it's out to left center. That looks to stay in the yard, and that might be something to tag up with, right? Yes, up to third base goes Soderstrom. Miguel Cabrera now with a chance to tie this game up. Takes a slider inside. He is hitting 405 with runners in scoring position this year. Two for three. Pitch out now. Maybe anticipating that squeeze play that I certainly do not want to see here. Base hit center field. That's going to tie the game. Cabrera really might be the answer all along in the outfield. He has been on a efficiency basis, one of our best power hitters this season. And he's only getting better. You Sneal Cruz. I'm hoping for a big second half from him. I really think he's about to take off and be one of our offensive leaders. That is playable down the right field line. Catch made in foul ground. And staying put at second base. So it's going to be left up to Miguel Vargas here with two gone. As good as any player to have in this situation. Takes a strike. Rangers lost again, by the way. The Astros score an important victory for them. This could be a chance to go up an additional game on Texas. And Vargas hits it in the air. Deep to right. And it's caught by Acuna. We got extras. Alfonso Montez on the mound. We have a lefty-lefty matchup and two getting up in the pen. Yanked foul. It's 0-2. Montez gets him looking. Down on three pitches. Now we're on time. As long as you get that first guy out without advancing the runner at second, you're on your way. Another strike to Evan White. He's four for four. All he throws is strikes. Cabrera in right makes the catch. And the runner stays put. Six pitches. Every one of them a strike here in the 10th. Tyler Freeman's 0 for three. Lines it foul. Seven straight strikes. And he can miss, apparently. Cleveland trying to get back tied with the Twins there in the Central. And they have to come through here with two gone, two strikes, with an 0 for 9 hitter. That is uh, a tough task. 
Two and two and missing low. I do not want to see this lineup turn over. We don't want to get any closer to Acuna. Full count on Freeman. There it is. Strike three. Alfonso Montes with a brilliant 10th. Let's go get him a win. Tuki Toussaint. Wow. We finally run into him in this series after spending quite a long time with him in the Rocky series. Those of you that watched. I was unable to develop him. I tried. I gave it my best shot. And uh, he was the main player we got back in the Trevor Story trade in that series. So that hurt to not have it pan out. Trey Sweeney up with a chance to win the game. One and two. And he does not offer. Oh, come on. There's no way he went around. Royce Lewis has an average that's creeping up a little bit. 246. How about go win us a game, Royce? And he goes around that strike three. Toussaint picks up two big ones. And now it's Vladimir Guerrero Jr. Still the subject of trade talks in the comments section. Guerrero's over on the day. And lines it directly to first. We'll have an 11th. No pitching change, though, for the A's facing the top of this order, nope. which means Acuna eventually. Did he get him there? No. We should have asked the third base umpire. He would have rung him up. Two and two here on Rachio. Montez gives up the drive to center. Heading back is Dawn. He can't get there. A ground rule double and a run scores. It just kept going. Rarely do we see one Don can't get to. And there he is. The Guardians right fielder, Ronald Acuna Jr. A 4-3 lead now. Guardians looking for a fifth run. Wish they'd make a pitching change here. Montez, 2-2, two, two, and a bouncer to third. Vargas makes the play. Wait a minute, when they get Jordan Walker? We just saw him on the St. Louis roster not long ago. So clearly some trades have gone down already ahead of the deadline. And Walker turns on one! Blasted to left! Opening up this lead, it's now 6-3. to three. Looks like that trade's already paying off for him. Well, this win streak is on the line. We've got to get three here in the 11th. Two strikes on Soderstrom, and he bounces it to third. And no advance, no run. That's going to be a base hit to right. Got to get three runs. And no need to send the runner when you've got a long ways to go. Don representing the tying run. The 1-1 is blocked by the catcher. 3-1 and one now. Got a chance here. I mean, you never feel good being down three in a situation like this, but... We might have a chance. Dawn, three and two now. This is gonna be a huge at bat. And he puts it in play. Out there, doubled up the game is over and so is the 11 game win streak for the Oakland Athletics. Don swung at ball four there. And that's a wrap as Tuki Toussaint did a really good job in extras. That Jordan Walker home run really caught me off guard. First of all, didn't expect him to be here in the first place. But it is the season of trading, and we've got to see what moves have already gone down. The Guardians have made their push, adding Jordan Walker. 
Honestly, St. Louis isn't all that great in this series. He probably would have been one of the better options for us to pursue. Although now I think it's a little bit more difficult to find a spot to play him because he'd be playing over Guerrero or be taking away ABs from Cabrera who has out hit him this season. Just doesn't have the same ceiling. That trade went down on July 10th, so not long ago at all. The Yankees have also made a move acquiring Gabriel Martinez. All the Blue Jays do now is trade teams their players. The Pirates are 42 and 50 despite being in it. Five straight losses here might push them into more seller territory. I still think that the, the cost to get Ian half would be really steep. And I'm starting to get uh, a little more less interested in trading away some of these prospects. Like Reyes is one guy I'm just not going to trade. I think he'll be a big contributor within a year or two. You could probably talk me into one of Rankin or De Silva. They're both 21 years old, have similar skill sets, and Rankin's offense is a little bit more developed. Hard to say what the future at shortstop is. We still have a lot of time with Trey Sweeney, two more years of team control. And then you have Julian Rodriguez, who's 24 now and starting to push for that playing time. Doesn't project to be a, a great power hitter, has okay vision discipline. I probably have to be okay trading him under the right circumstances. And then, like, we have our big three now. Our prospects, Cruz, Don, and Cabrera are now big league starters. So the next guy would be like Forrest Battle at 25 years old. A player I'm not interested really in trading. So if we included Marco Da Silva in a deal, it's still going to take a decent bit more. Like even Da Silva and Rodriguez together, two really good A potential prospects, early to mid 20s. That's not even close to getting the deal done. But when the lineup is this hot, who's to say we end up making a trade at all for a, a hitter at this point? I mean... It wouldn't be a bad idea to supplement the bench, but even then, it's going to be a tough decision either way. This is the lineup I want to start using now. Arise back in that two spot. And Sweeney down here as Cabrera works his way up. And you can make the argument he should be even further up. But he's been so good with runners in scoring position, hitting for such good power. I like the idea of him being more middle of the order. We could also afford to probably knock down Guerrero a little bit. Murphy going for the save, and he closes the door as we take two out of three from the Guardians. Still continuing a homestand. We got the Royals now, and we lose the first game 7-5. to five. In this four-game series, we end up splitting with the Royals. Vasquez did have a really rough start in this one, but still holds a sub-4 ERA. Joe Michael picks up win 12 in the bounce back. And then the defending champions, who have taken a, a bit of a step back to this point. While the Chuck's trying to go the distance and the A's pick up the victory 5-1, he couldn't quite complete the shutout. But another brilliant pitching outing for this roster. And we're going to play this next game here against the Rays with Cole Phillips. He's had some of his best starts recently, and it looks like he could be a, a long-term fixture in this rotation. He's up to an 83 overall now at age 25. He's pitched over 100 innings. He has 19 starts, 10 of those quality starts with an ERA at 4.08. The strikeout rate is very good, 9.6 per 9 innings. The walks have always been on the higher side with him, but they've improved this year. And I think he's doing a, a strong job overall. Might be a good day for us to mix in some different players into the starting lineup, though. Just a couple weeks to go until the deadline. We'll see if there are any injuries or situations we have to address. I think the team is at a really good spot right now. The pitching and hitting are both really at their peaks of the year. 
And here is Phillips versus Randy Arozarena as we get started. There's a strike. 57 and 40. Couldn't win 100 games last year. We might have a chance this season if we can continue playing well in the second half. Line to Carlson, and he's unable to make the catch. Holding Randy, though, with a single. Off day for Vladimir Guerrero and Miguel Cabrera as... Yep, I thought he'd be taken off. I like it better when they, when they yell out that he's going. I don't always notice it immediately. Randy at second. Low, almost hitting it off of him. One gone. And rolled up the middle. Here's Sweeney. Nice pick. Got the out there with Arise playing first. Here is the all-star in first year Ray, MJ Melendez. Former Royal. Good slider inside. Phillips ahead. And he strikes him out looking on the top edge of the zone. We get a chance to face our old pal Mitch Keller whose ERA is approaching seven. I don't have to see his FIP or advanced numbers. This is awful. 1.7 whip. Not even startable. This is definitely below replacement level play they're getting from him. 6.6 .6 strikeout rate, that's way lower than it's been, while the home run and walk rates are a lot higher. Just five quality starts on the season, I'm not trying to give him his six today. Miguel Vargas leads off. Ooh, 97, got some heat up there, strike three. There's a drive to right center. Arise to the wall. And that'll be extra bases for the ever consistent Luis Arise. Middle of our order is going to be shaken up today. We do have Reyes here, and on deck is Soderstrom, but Yusneel Cruz is going to hit fifth. Kind of replacing Guerrero's role in the lineup. Get a chance to see him around some different batters this time around. Randmill Reyes. Ooh, came up empty. That was just late. Taking low, we even the count. No! Slider low, strike three. So Keller only averages a bit over six strikeouts per nine innings, but his first two outs come with the strikeout. Now finally getting a favorable count. It comes with two down. Tyler Soderstrom hoping to break open this first inning. Nothing doing there. All fastballs in this at bat from Mitch Keller. Oh, the slider there. And he strikes out the side. Phillips, right to him, makes the play, retiring Curtis Mead, looking for a quick top half of the second. Now, those of you who have been waiting for some football content on this channel, as it really has been a year of baseball, you won't have to wait a whole lot longer. Now, I'm not immediately starting a slow sim rebuild, but that is on the way, as we will... Play that on a hop, base hit Harrison Bader. Right now, my plan when it comes to getting some more football content on the channel and getting back to it, we're going to return to that worst team rebuild I did the first two videos for back in, I believe, September. Sweeney going to go to second to finish off the top half of the second inning. So I'm going to wrap that up. I've started work on that. I'm going to record a bunch of that today. And then... I want to I want to finish that little, you know, mini series. And then I want to break out an older Madden to do just in one episode like throwback retro rebuild. It's something I've really wanted to do and the first video I do it with is going to be on uh, Madden 06 on the PS2. 
Ground ball, the short. Cruz gone on one pitch. And after we get that going again, finish off that series I left hanging, do one of those rebuilds I've been really wanting to do lately. We're going to get back to that slow sim style GM experience we've been doing for years. But now I've taken the longest break I've ever had from that style of content since I started doing it. I know a lot of you want to see football again. It is on the way. Oh, what am I doing? What was that? That's four strikeouts. This is unbelievable. I need to get my mind right here. That's five. I got some players here that are definitely new from that World Series team. In the air for Carlson. He runs it down. Carlos Colmenares. So clearly they lost some players, but they couldn't lose Randy or Rosarena. I don't want to see him anymore in this series. The ALCS was too much. Extending his lead, trying to hold him. He goes again, and that's lifted for Cruz, who will make the play. He goes again. Soderstrom, not in time. Randy does it again. And it's rocketed to center, and Don's gonna fire this one home. A Rosarena scores on the Jazz Chisholm single. So there's one. A Rosarena just passed Aaron Don in steals. And we gotta stop striking out to Mitch Keller. This is getting ridiculous. Been really early or really late on the majority of his pitches. I don't know why we can't time it up. I say we like it's not all my fault. It is. The average is definitely up for Don. 277. I don't know. Is this curveball that good? Acting like I haven't hit one before. All right, 3-2. Whatever it is, we just need to not swing at something out of the zone here. Ah, oh, man. Take that extra split second to read the pitch, and then you can't hit a fastball either. All right, Dylan Carlson. He could hit against the Rays. Maybe he's what we need today. Nope. I thought it was getting through. I didn't realize he was over so far. This is a problem. Nice pitch there by Cole Phillips. And he gets him on a pitch that was a miss. I remember a lot of the starts I had prior with Phillips and it was tough to get first pitch strikes and consistency wasn't there. You would just look at the highs and they were really impressive. Now he's starting to put everything together. Nice to see. Meade almost gets hit. Arise! Can't make the play. It goes under his glove. Base hit. He's going to go now. Soderstrom will catch him stealing. And Harrison Bader hits it weakly for Geloff, and we're out of the inning. So, one trip through the order. We have one hit, courtesy of Luis Arise. Oh, and now he gets hit. So, a base runner for Reyes. Wow, are you kidding me? That was our best swing of the day. Come on now. Not this time, Mitch. I've seen it enough. His breaking stuff has fooled me all game. Taking two in a row. It's one of those games where to this point I would have been better off not holding the controller for any of these at-bats, I think. 
Could I have done better than having one base runner through like 10 at bats? No controller. Here's Reyes, crank to left, way back, and on the track it's caught by the last guy I want to see, Randy Arozarena. That was a little bit out in front. It's outer third of the plate. I like being early, but not when it's away like that. So here's Soderstrom now. High breaking ball and skied. It's the second out. Leaves it up to you, Sneal Cruz. 50th pitch. And another drive. Left center this time. A Rosarena measures it to finish the fourth. Hey, we didn't strike out in that inning. Improvement. Now Carson Williams. He and Curtis Mead had some clutch hits back in that ALCS. Got him looking at 94. Carlos Colmenares. I don't know anything about him. Let's get to know. I just saw there he had like five triples, so he clearly has some speed. 78. So he's their utility guy. I don't think he's an everyday player. He's only played 75 games. Well, he's he's been a full-time player for at least a stretch. But he's really more of a bench utility guy. He's in the nine spot. Good change up from Cole Phillips. He's only thrown 11 balls to this point. And bust the bat of Coleman Ares. Oh, you got to get him. A Rosarena on one pitch. He's gone. Taking the curveball. He hasn't really shown he can throw those pitches for strikes. We just chase him and turn him into strikes. Sweeney hits one the other way and delivers our second hit. It'll be a double with one gone. For whatever reason, Trey's become one of those guys I can hit to all fields with. We've had a lot of extra base hits. So that gives us Aaron Dunn. Attacking that fastball up, should let that go. Energy winding down big time for Keller. He's thrown too many curveballs today. Good sinker to get strike two. Wide and three, two. Carlson on deck. Pitch 61 for Keller. And Dawn lines it hard to second base. I love those retro Devil Ray hats. Those are pretty sweet. I love it. The CPU will break out their alternates and stuff from time to time. Carlson! Right field! And taking the lead! He threw one too many breaking balls, and one finally found the strike zone. Carlson with big hits against the Rays. At least we still got that. That's perfect right there. That's the worst pitch he's thrown in this game by far. Two to one and a 73% chance of victory. So Ashby doesn't seem available. I'm not making a change to start the inning. I'm not sure I really have to get a lefty up here, but I like to start getting guys warm just because you never know. Unless it's Joe Michael, then you're not getting anybody warm for a while. What, what am I doing? All right, you got that one. But we got this one off the bat of Dylan Carlson for a 2-1 advantage. The A's are pretty desperate to pick up some big series wins here ahead of the deadline. They are not in the top five for the wild card at the moment. And the East, 
has uh, not gone their way this year. Strike three for Phillips. So I know the Red Sox are pretty good this season. They've got a good young core. And the Yankees, after trading away Aaron Judge, cleared some space. They're making moves. And they look to be pretty solid this year. I think that leaves the Rays in third place as Melendez sends one past Vargas. Now Arias cranks one. Left center field. And the Rays retake the lead. Barreled up the fastball for number nine. Three to two, Tampa. That's another hit. Third of the inning for Tampa on an 0-2 fastball. And Bader delivers a single. So they're starting to make a lot better contact now, and it's not just on the four seam. Carson Williams now in the game. Two on and two outs. Weekly hit on the backhand. Trey Sweeney finishes the inning. But the lead is surrendered, and we trail again by one. They make a change, and we'll be doing the same in the seventh inning. Now we face the lefty, Eric Lauer. And as far as our bench goes, we already have Geloff in place, so Royce Lewis would be another option. Not going to pinch hit for Luisa Rise here. And they're going to bring in more lefties, it appears. This one is towered to right field. Heading back to the deep wall. And it's off the top. Arise will stop at second base. Nearly tying the game. I should also point out we have Vladimir Guerrero on the bench today. So that would be another option. I know it's not like super favorable he's still a righty he's an option but this is Fran Mill Reyes good slider from Lauer as he gets ahead one two ah got jammed on that slider but that could be taggable we're gonna run Arise, hustling to third, getting there, no! No way, challenge that. Bader in right, I know Bader's known for his defense, but that is such a long throw to make. He dove kind of inside there, it made the tag a little bit easier to apply. Maybe I could have uh, controlled that to be on the outside of the bag. So what if I had to flick the right stick like up into the left? Maybe I did it up into the right. Just because it's like if you're going to flick the right stick as quick as you can, that's probably the, the fastest way to do it. Yeah, maybe I didn't aim the slide right. Inning over. We bring in Andre Palante now, who's been very solid. I haven't gotten to pitch with him a whole lot this year. Just never seems to happen. Missing with a couple fastballs. We'll see if we can get in the zone here. And we do. Colmenares comes up empty. I love that big breaking ball he throws. And now a 3-2 count, what do you got? Stuck with the curveball, and he walks him. Arosa Reina's turn. Good speed aboard now. Jammed towards Carlson. And that's the first out. Three and one now to Josh Lowe. Gives him a meatball. It is cranked to right center, and Carlson tracks it down. Ooh. 
Hoping to keep this a one-run ball game. Jazz Chisholm falls behind. Palante gets him out in front. And then a rise is thrown off of first to continue the inning. An error on Tyler Soderstrom. Melendez splits. Keep it from really being viable to make a move here with a lefty. Palante 2-1, nails the corner. Ground ball, Geloff, right to Sweeney, and the inning is over. You sneal Cruz facing the lefty Lauer. Outside. Lauer pitching him very carefully on the outside. A 2-1 count. Finally threw inside, and we should have let it go. Full count now. We'd love to get that speed on the base paths. Lauer gives up the line drive to first. A little bit late on that swing. Still 99 off the bat. Geloff's turn to face the lefty. And that's headed to right center. Base hit and cut off. Big at bat now for Sweeney. Gave us a double last time. His numbers against lefties have improved. We're not making a move. There goes Geloff, and it's swung on and missed as he takes second base. I felt like 2-1 there, we'd probably get something to swing at. Didn't end up working out that way, but we got the extra lead. And he didn't throw over. 2-2 two and two now. Lifted towards center. And that's going to be Jazz, and we won't test this time. Good throw. Aaron Don now. Trying to come through with two outs. Two straight sliders out of the zone. And missing three times. Carlson on deck. Does his best against lefties. Taking the fastball over the middle is Don. Wasn't swinging there regardless. It's three and two. Two meatballs there. Ball four. Well, Carlson supplied our first two runs. We'll see if he can give us a lead in the seventh. That ball is headed towards the palm trees. Just a piece. Lauer does have a changeup slider, 12 6, a lot of options. No! Man, every strikeout's been something out of the zone, it feels like. Lauer ends the inning, we head to the eighth. Jonathan Hernandez entering the game. Urias leads things off. And he sends a single into right field. And a bouncer towards third. Got the out at second and convert the double play. John Almanzar is next out for the Rays. It's not one of the lefties they warmed up earlier. But a 1-7-7 ERA, he's one of the best they have. Here's the top of our order in the bottom of the eighth inning. Not much offense in this one. Miguel Vargas, 0 for 3 with three strikeouts. Tanner Houck would come in if this score holds in the ninth. Vargas, 2 and 2. And takes outside. Full count. And that's a foul ball down the line. Ball four. 
Leadoff man is on. Pinch run. Yeah, we could run Lewis now. Our eyes is two for two, plus he's also gotten hit. They're thinking we might steal here. They're probably right. You know, I'll think about it. I'm particular sometimes. Popped him up. One down. 0 for 3 is Fran Mill Reyes. And it's 2 and 0. Reyes with a bouncer directly to second. And a double play. On to the ninth we go. Line towards center. Colmenares with a base hit. He goes, and Randy hits a rocket to second. We'll only get the one. And then Josh Lowe bounces to a rise, and we make the play. So bottom nine against Tanner Houck. It's a one-run game. Do we have a clutch hit left in us? 27 of 34. They've played a lot of close games this year. Seven blown saves for a 500 ball club. Soderstrom leads off the ninth. He wanted to make it eight. That ball's headed to right field, and it's getting down. Soderstrom hustling around first. Here's Bader offline. And the tying runs in scoring position. Big double for Tyler Soderstrom, and now a 10-game hitting streak. Beautiful swing. Now let's score him. You sneal Cruz. Foul tip on the splitter. Wow. Another foul ball. We're a little bit in front, but not significantly. Fighting off the slider now. Cruz down on strikes. As Hauk throws perhaps his best pitch of the inning. A lot of strikeouts today for RAs. And that's going to bring up Zach Geloff. We're going to make a move. Vladimir Guerrero's coming off the bench for this at bat. Vladdy's getting a chance here in the ninth inning. Low ball two. And it's in the air, center field. Way under it. We're not going to challenge Jazz. Two gone, and the game is up to Trey Sweeney. Two strikes. Very late. It's hard to make contact on a swing that late. Trey dribbles it right back to Hauk. Planting and throwing out. Sweeney, it is the ball game. And the Rays pick up their 50th win of the year. And what was a pretty frustrating game as I struck out a whole lot. Seven strikeouts for Mitch Keller as a, as a unit. They had 10 strikeouts. We only threw five in this one. We usually get a lot more than that. Feel like in a lot of these games, I haven't managed to do much against opposing bullpens, but... We had chances and could not come through. Tough loss there for Oakland, and this is going to be the series finale. We're down four. And the Rays end up taking the series two out of three after we were able to take a series from them in Tampa earlier this year. Odell Spoon just declined like $70,000 more than his demand was, so... Haven't signed everybody yet. Next episode, we should learn the ratings of our draft picks, and we're going to head out for a little road trip here at 47 or 57 and 42. 
We got the deadline as well. We have to make our final decisions on if there's going to be a trade this year. Standings are tight. It's nice to try and separate yourself with a big move. What can we do? If you have any final thoughts on the trade deadline, let me know down below in the comments section. But that'll do it for our action in today's video. Hope you all enjoyed and there's more on the way along with some long awaited and long overdue football content. Please leave a like, subscribe, and I'll see you next time, everybody. Have a great day.